grace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's referred to as the shortest passage in Holy Scripture, but it's one that's just packed feeling and thought. It's verse 35 in our gospel reading for today. It's just two words long. The words, Jesus wept. This morning we're going to ponder this verse and delve deep into what Jesus must have been feeling and thinking as, as he brought forth tears at the graveside of, of his friend Lazarus. We all know the context now. We've read that gospel reading. Jesus was some distance from the town of Bethany. He was carrying out his ministry in that area. He had received a message from Mary and Martha saying that their, their brother was sick and, and that he was near death. I suppose one would have expected that Jesus would immediately leave and, and go to the bad side of his friend, but he doesn't. He continues his work in that area of Jericho and upon completion then says, let's go back to Judea. And they went back to Bethany and to Mary and to Martha. If you had been here, Martha said, my brother wouldn't have died. But Lazarus had died. In fact, he had been dead for four days since Jesus arrived. And deeply moved, Jesus says, where did you lay him? And they said, come and see. And it's then that we read those verses. And Jesus wept. Can you imagine that? The eternal Son of God is weeping. But then we need to remember that this eternal Son of God is also totally human. In that regard, he's very much just like us. And his tears are his reaction to the news that a, a dear and close friend, Lazarus, had died. His tears were tears of loss. They were feelings of separation. He was feeling at that moment what we feel when someone close to us dies, when, when we shed tears of loss. But here we see the strong one weeping, even as we weep. I want you to thank God for the ability to weep. It's, it's not a weakness at all, but it's a God-given ability to, to bring out of ourselves all the emotions and, and the pains that we feel. And here at the graveside of his friend, this strong one, this eternal son of God, yet totally human man, weeps just as we weep important for us to understand that strength is never measured by the lack of tears. Jesus wept. But I think there was also something else behind those tears that day. It seems to me that what may have come up in his mind were all the trials and the troubles and the difficulties that he saw in this world and, and, and their root cause. It's something that, that people don't want to think about and, and, and they don't want to accept because it's just too painful for us to contemplate. And that is, is that this world is really, as the scriptures say, a veil of tears. That there really isn't any joy here, not lasting joy. That there's not really any happiness here, not enduring happiness. And that's because this world is caught in the vice grip of sin and of death. And that the end result of everything is going to be grief and heartache and pain and sorrow and disease and death. And Jesus sees it all. And he weeps. The world in which that he had created the world that was to be a place of joy and happiness, of fellowship and love, a, a world in which men and women and children were to walk and talk with God and, and be a visible reflection of what God is like. This world is no longer it. This world is on a tailspin to death. And Jesus believes. 
but his weeping is not like our weeping. <clears throat> In our weeping, we, we feel just kind of helpless. We feel as that there is nothing that we can do to change the situation. But the strong one can, and he does. Earlier in this story, when Jesus first arrived, he had a conversation with Martha. Jesus said to her point blank, your brother is will rise again. And Martha says, I know he will, not really totally understanding what she was talking about. Jesus says, but he is. And here's the reason why. It's because I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And now at the two, Jesus demonstrates that this statement is more than just fancy words. He says, roll away the stone. And then with a loud voice, he says, Lazarus, come out. And this man who had been dead for four days comes out, his hands and his feet still wrapped in the, uh, in the burial clothes. And bind him, Jesus, and let him go. See, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. I do have power over sin, and I have power over death. Just look at Lazarus there. He's alive. <coughs> I am the resurrection and the life. This is the reason why Jesus came into our world. He saw the tears in our world and he came to bear our griefs and to carry our sorrows. To do that, sin needed to be dealt with and, and death needed to be destroyed. And that's what he did. He carried them to their ultimate conclusion on Calvary's cross. Oh, it killed them all, right? That's what sin always does. That's the wage of sin. But on the third day, he rose from death. He rose to declare victory over sin and death. He rose to give victory to all of those through faith in him. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Our Lord Jesus gives us two wonderful promises in these words. The first promise is this, that believers will live again. Death is not going to be our own. The grave is not going to be our final destination. We shall live again. There is the resurrection. And the second promise, everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. These words aren't just pretty words. Jesus means every one of them. The Christian never really dies. Death is the judgment against sin. But Jesus already paid that judgment. So then what happens when we cease to exist in this world? For the Christian, it's but a change of place. Or oh, our bodies return to the dust as they wait that day of resurrection, but our spirit, our soul, goes to be with the Lord. Think of it this way. As the believer closes his eyes in sleep, they are opened in eternity to behold the Lord Jesus face to face. He who believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I said this morning that I wanted to share the, the feelings and the thoughts of our Lord Jesus that led him to weep that day at the graveside of Lazarus. I think there is another reason why Jesus wept. Jesus knew how so many people were going to react to his demonstration of power sin and death. And that led him to cry. You see, they, they just wouldn't believe. The story of the raising of Lazarus concludes with the Sanhedrin meeting in Jerusalem. And the conclusion of that meeting, from that day on, they plotted to kill him. They rejected his claims. They rejected his grace and his love and his mercy. They rejected his forgiveness, gifts of forgiveness and life. All they wanted to do was get rid of him. 
And that wasn't the only time where Jesus cried over this man. Earlier, St. Luke tells us of Jesus' sorrow over the attitude that he found in Jerusalem. He put it this way, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you together like a hen that gathers for chicks, but you wouldn't. And Jesus wept. He came into this world to save them, but they refused. They rejected his gift. And the same thing is happening all around us in our world today. <coughs> but what about you? Do you believe it? Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds centered in Christ Jesus.